Good morning, BCF Church. Let's stand together. Him work it for your good. He's not done with what he started. He's not done until it's good. Hello, peace. Hello, joy. Hello, love. Hello, strength. Hello.
morning, Missia family. Let's give her a round of applause. This is Nailea, and she has decided to give her life to Christ. And I am so proud of her. Nailea, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Nailea, can you announce in front of, in front of your BCF family that Jesus is Lord? Jesus is Lord. Yeah! Come on! I get to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Welcome them to BCF Church. For everybody who's joined us online, hi. How are you doing? Hope you're doing well. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Hey, you can have a seat for a moment when you get a chance. Uh, just show of hands, how many of you guys were at our men and meat barbecue last yeah. night? Man, we had about 80 guys out there on the land, and great message, and some of the most tender fajita I have ever had, and I am not exaggerating. And I know you ladies are like, come on. L ladies, your time is coming. I want you to save the date, April 27th at 9.30 a.m. We're going to have a women's coffee talk right here. We'll be telling you more about it in the coming weeks, but for now, just save the date, put that in your calendar. Now, if you're our guest here today, maybe you've been coming for just a little while, you might be wondering, okay, what's the schedule here? When are they going to start talking about asking for my money because then I'm going to leave? Just chill. We are not passing any offering plates today. If you're our guest, don't even worry about it. Giving is for our church family. This is part of our way of saying, God, I love you. God, I trust you. I am committed to your people. I'm committed to building your kingdom. I, I believe in what is happening here, and I want to be a part of it. So we give through uh, our offering envelopes. We give online at 
bcfchurch.com or through our Church Center app. I did that just this week. And you can take this envelope, and when we're done today, you can drop it over in our Prayer and Giving Center right over there or in any of our giving boxes around the room. That's also where you can drop your connection card with your prayer requests, and we will pray for you this week. But if you're a guest, please don't feel any pressure. If you're a first-time guest, we don't want anything from you. We want to give something to you. So when we're done today, stop by that table right there in the back where it says, Welcome, right back there. And when we're done, take your connection card over there, and we have a special gift to thank you for joining us today. Now, during this next song, you can stand, you can sit, you can raise your hands, you can close your eyes, but I want you to listen to the words and see if this expresses where you are and what you're feeling this week. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you. Thank you for saving us. God, thank you. When we needed you most, when we were, were chained in our sins, when we were surrounded by our struggles, you came to rescue us. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. Amen. Let's stand again. Oh, I've been desperate. Cry those loud prayers Like Job on his knees Saying, Lord, I need more than a little help And I've been surrounded Felt fear on all sides Like Daniel and the lions I know when I fight, I don't fight by myself I need a rescue Jesus you came through Oh in my heart and season Your promise held true and Every time I give it in Lord you prove it again That you're still my Savior now Jesus you
I need you to go back to that chorus. Church, this morning, church, there's something happening this morning. And right now, I'm going to ask each and every one of you to step out of your comfort zone and lift up those hands. And I want you to allow the Holy Spirit to just speak to you as we hear the chorus. Because he who has set us free, we are free indeed. So lift up our hands and let's just allow the Holy Spirit to lead. I'm hearing that part. There's a lot. There's a lot to think about, and it's. And I really wanted for that part to just sink in, because there's a lot of meaning on that. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. As I'm hearing that, I start thinking. How, is, how easy it is to forget, to forget that even when we were sinners, God still sent his one and only son Amen. to die for us at the cross. Amen? Amen? Come on, church. You have to get up. You have to wake up. I eat coffee. I eat donuts. And we have plenty of sugar back there. Come on. It's already almost the middle of the day. But let me tell you something. As I was writing this message, it was a battle. First, I got super excited. I even told Bo, Bo, I got this. I got this. God knows that I got this. But then the enemy attacked. And he made me get sick. But he didn't win. He was defeated already because at the same time, God was telling me, I need you to rest. I need you to take the time because this message is going to take a lot from you. And sometimes God will put us in situations where we need to rest. Because us men, some ladies, we're hard-headed. Somos cabezones. And we don't listen. We just tend to do and do and do. But I even told Bo, Bo, I can't do it in one message. I need a whole series. <laughs> Let me tell you why. Because my team on Friday night knows that I've never stayed on script. They know that I always go off script. But he said, I'll use that for another time. So I can't wait when he goes to vacation. <laughs> Just kidding. You know, and the reason why I also struggled was because there's so many parts to this message. There's the practical side, we have the physical, the emotional, and even the mental side. There's too much just to cover in one Sunday morning. So I'm going to start. Let's begin. I want you to get your pamphlets, open it up. 
and follow along. For those watching online, welcome. We love you. And follow along. Look at this scripture. Read it. Let's, let's look at it together. They promise freedom, but they themselves are slaves to sin and corruption. For you are a slave to whatever controls you. Mm. Unfortunately, that breaks my heart. To see how many of us are still align, allowing the chains of addictions to have control over us. To have a stronghold over us. That we can't even break them just because we ourselves have given that power to them. But not just that power to control us, but also to define us. So I want to share with you how do we get to the point of addiction. Well, it starts with a hurt. And for some reason, the enemy's attacking right now, guys. So just bear with me. It starts with a hurt. I heard it's a deep wound caused by somebody or something. <sighs> Sorry, guys. From all the days, everything was going well. This is how the enemy works. He tries to defeat us by causing us and putting doubt. Like I said, it starts with a hurt. Something or someone that causes you pain deeply. It could be physically, emotionally, even mentally. Then those hurts lead us to hang-ups, which are beliefs that we have developed about ourselves or others as the result of hurts. Let me give you an example of those. Bitterness. Resentment, distrust, anger, and the one that I hear a lot, I'm not good enough. So these hurts and hangups can then lead us into habits that we use as a coping mechanism to deal with the pain, which can include drugs and alcohol. So this so nowadays, everyone struggles with some form of addiction. Now, if it's not drugs and alcohol, I'm going to name a few. Maybe it's food. Those donuts back there, I have to stay away from there. My wife is in charge, but I say, I'm sorry, I, I can't help you. I'll help you eat them. But that's something that I struggle with, food. It could also be work, control issues, social media, exercise, relationship, sex, shopping, or even video games for those gamers out there. So this morning, I'm asking myself and I'm wondering how many of us are dealing with an addiction. How many of us are dealing with an addiction that we want to break, but we can't just seem to break it? We try once, we fail. We try again, we get up, we fail again. You know, if you are now saying, no, I don't have a problem, I'm good, guess what, guys? That's denial. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you right now, we have a chair for you here every Friday night at 7 p.m. at Celebrate Recovery. Right? 
Oye, ¿están dormidos o qué? You all need to wake up. No man. So, we tried and failed. We tried and do it again. We tried and failed. That we get to the point where we make a deal with God, right? God, if you help me do this, I promise not to do blank again. Right? The blank, you fill it in. That reminds me of my children. You know, I have three beautiful blessings. Expensive, but beautiful. You know, and I have my oldest, and she's the one that I, Dad, please let me go out with my friends. If you let me go out, I promise that I will do the dishes, I will clean the house, I will fold the clothes. I'm like, is that promise for me or for your mom? Because I don't do none of that. <laughs> they promise you the whole world, right? But then they come back. And you ask them, can you throw out the trash or can you clean? <laughs> what happened? You just promised me everything. Now you don't want to do it? We forget. And then I have my mini-me, my junior. And I call him my mini-me because I can't deny him. He looks exactly like me. <laughs> and he's the one that says, Dad, if you buy me this for my birthday, which is around the corner, I don't even want to know. You don't have to buy me anything for the rest of the year. <laughs> yeah. Not even Christmas. Right, not even a week passes by and he's already asking, can I have this, can I have that? Isn't that crazy how we forget? So this morning, I want to share with you something that I love to do and celebrate recovery. This is an acrostic. And I want to share with you five biblical steps and look at how we can break these chains of addiction. And we're going to look at the acrostic break. So, please take your notes and let's follow along. Letter B. Begin today. Not tomorrow, not next week, not next month. Have you ever noticed that there's more people going on a diet tomorrow than today? <laughs> right? Ah, I'll start tomorrow, especially on Sundays. I don't know why. Maybe because we have the cookies over there. <laughs> but it's amazing. You see, I want to share with you a scripture. And it says, don't brag about tomorrow. Since you don't know what the day will bring. You see, he is warning us and instructing us to quit telling ourselves one of these days. Stop postponing. The longer you wait, the harder it's going to get to change. Now, if you're waiting for the right moment, guess what? Man knows it's never going to happen. Don't be like the farmer. Look at what the Bible tells us. Farmers who wait for perfect weather never plant. If they watch every cloud, they never harvest. So once again, if you wait for the perfect condition, you'll never get it done. So what's your excuse? Why aren't you working with that problem? The person who really wants to change is going to find a way. And the person who doesn't want to change finds an excuse. So begin today. Letter R. Refuse to blame others. This is my favorite. This is my favorite. This is a problem that has been happening way back, all the way to Adam and Eve. You know, Adam sinned, right? And Adam took it like a man. 
he blamed his wife. <laughs> How many of you done that? Hey, I, I've done it. Well, stop feeding me. That's why I'm getting bigger. <laughs> right? Stop doing those taquitos. We all been there. But we'll never get better until we take personal responsibility. We got to admit, this is my problem. This is my problem. Proverbs reminds us, some people ruin themselves by their own stupid actions. And then blame the Lord. Um, you see, I understand that we're all product of how we were raised and what we have experienced in our childhood. But we're adults. As an adult, we are no longer victims. This reminds me of another scripture. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. If we're blaming others, it's because we know that we're doing wrong. And if you know, you're no longer a victim. So listen to me carefully. Write this down. Blaming is an attempt to discharge pain onto another person. Let me say that again. Blaming is an attempt to discharge pain unto another person. So who are you blaming for your problems? Your parents? Your husband? Your wife? Your kids? Teachers? Or your boss? Or we might be even just saying, well, the devil made me do it. Mm-hmm. It's God's fault. He allowed it. You see, when you blame others but yourself, you're just being lame. You get it? Take the B out of blame. You become lame. Uh, ha, 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 ha. Come on. Come on. Double the scoops on those coffees, please. They need it. Man, tough crowd today. <laughs> so we need to stop. We've got to quit making excuses for ourselves and stop accusing others. Letter E, examine my life. Hmm. Something that I've learned in CR is that I need to take the time to do a personal inventory. I do an internal audit, an honest evaluation. Now, I know this is hard. I know I'm not going to go up to the mirror and say, I'm fat. <laughs> right? I'm usually going to say, man, I look like the rock. <laughs> right? Not even close. I still have hair. I'm not bald. <laughs> Just saying. But I look into these questions and I ask myself, what are my weaknesses? How long have I had this problem? Where am I tempted the most? What are my fears? What are my frustrations? Now, my wife can answer those real quick. <laughs> but I don't want somebody else to do it for you. You need to be honest with yourself. And be honest with God. So listen. So we need to do an honest evaluation of our lives. And look at what the Bible says. Let us examine our ways and test them. And let us return to the Lord. Now, I want you to circle examine 
and test. You see, in order to change, we got to stop pretending. We can cover up all of our faults. We've got to come face to face with them. Why? Because the fact is that hiding an addiction only intensifies it and makes it worse. Denial prevents healing. Let's look at this scripture. Finally, I confessed all my sins to you and stopped trying to hide my guilt. I said to myself, I will confess my rebellion to the Lord and you forgave me. All my guilt is God. God is waiting for us. God just said, admit, let me know that you have a problem. And I will forgive you and wipe you clean of that guilt. It sounds easy, but I understand that it's hard. I've been myself many times. Might be a pastor, but I'll, it's like I say every Friday night, I'm not perfect. I'm still human. And I have to continue making an inventory daily. This is why we need to do an evaluation. And not just one time, two times. No, do it continually. Start with one month and then go to two months, then three months, then do it quarterly. But continue to do inventory. You see, healthy people are always evaluating themselves, right? They go to the gym, they look at what they're gonna eat, they go to HEB and Walmart and they look at the back of the, the box and say, oh, it uh, has too much fat, too much sugar, no, -uh, I can't. And they put it down to get another thing, right? Spiritually, we have to do the same thing. And we have to ask ourselves, where am I slipping? What am I doing wrong? Where am I getting off course? And keep short accounts with God. Be honest with God, but more importantly, be honest with yourself. And that's the hardest part, being honest with yourself. Let me share a quote with you. Face your fears. What we can't confront, we can never conquer. The fears we don't face today will become our limits for tomorrow. Isn't that crazy? We put our own limits. So letter A. Ask Christ to take over my life. Church, he is just waiting for us to ask him for help. And I know that's hard. But we need a power greater than ourselves in order to change. We can't change under our own power because our own power is what got us in this mess in the first place. Our pride got us here. Our anger got us in trouble. Our addictions is what gets us in trouble. We need somebody else with a greater power than us to help us out. And if we know this, how come we don't go straight to the source? Let's look at this scripture. Don't let sin control your body any longer. Don't give in to sinful desires, but give yourself completely to God. Every part of you to be used for his good purpose. Mm. Every part of you. That means you can't have one foot in, one foot out. 
Now, don't get scared. I practice this every Friday night. I'm always at the edge. <laughs> so, foundation. Somebody's help. If I put it over here, I don't have any help. That's my power. So if I step in my own power, what's going to happen? Yes. So you can't have one foot in, one foot out. Ooh, I'm already shaking. <laughs> you can't. You have to completely give yourself. Oh. So every day we're controlled by something. It could be people, other time schedules, drugs, alcohol, and food. And those are just examples. And let me tell you this right now. I'm using food a lot just because I struggle with food. You see, it's been one year that I've been working on myself. A year, what are we? And four months that I started working on myself. I've gone from 320 pounds. Hold on. Huh? <laughs> 320 pounds to 260 pounds. Isn't that amazing? Praise the Lord. This shit didn't even fit. Everybody thinks it's new. No, I had it in my closet for years. Just didn't close. But I could have not done it by myself. I needed help. And instead of having something else control our lives, we have to say, I'm going to have God control my life. And that's where the real freedom takes place. Let's go back to the scripture. And let's circle the word completely. Completely. See, many times we want to give the problem to God. Whatever it is, lust, porn, financial, anxiety, stress, you want to give that problem. But you still want to be in control of your whole life, right? Say, I'm struggling with financial, but I still want to go out and eat and go clubbing and everything that takes money. But you want that to be fixed. That, it doesn't work that way. You have to allow God to take control of everything. True or not true? How many can relate to that? I know I can. My wife can be proof of that. You see, we can't just give part. And I, and I want to say, why don't we give all and we just give part? Well, the reason why is because we are afraid. Nombre pastor, I'm not scared. No, Pastor, I'm not scared. No tengo miedo. Guess what? Man, we are scared. We are scared. Because we don't want to give what we call fun and freedom. And that's our pride. We want to give the problem, but we don't want to give our lifestyle. Why? Because we're afraid. We're afraid of the unexpected. We don't know what's going to happen. But let me tell you this. God is a good God. And he has a purpose for each and every one of you. Just like he had a purpose for me. Never did I think I was going to be up here. I was messed up. My wife can tell you. I have scars to prove it. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it in abundantly. 
You matter to God. So we need to relax and let God take the wheel. The Bible says that God is for you, not against you. You see, when I was in jail, for those that don't know my testimony, I had to surrender myself. I didn't have a choice. I was about to get deported, but most importantly, I was going to lose my daughter, my family. And at that time, I hit rock bottom. Now, for me, it just took one day at jail. One day, one night. But that was the night that everything changed. Because that was the night where I literally fell on my knees. I lift up my hands and say, Lord, I'm tired. I'm done with this. I don't know what else to do. Please take over. My pride was broken. And from that moment on, God turned my mess into a message. And he wants to do the same thing for you. And the crazy thing about this is that all my charges There were white, oh, there we go. I guess I'm too, too edge. <laughs> and this is why I say it, because last August, I recently just became an American citizen. Yeah. yeah. So those border patrols out there, you can't catch me. <laughs> and I'm not scared. They'll probably still catch me. They have little four-wheelers, <laughs> cheaters. But... You see, when I went for the interview, the interviewer told me, how come you took so long to become a U.S. citizen? And I explained to him my charges and everything. So he went in there and he said, but there's no charges here. They were literally white clean. That's the power of God. Isn't that amazing? Letter K. Keep away from temptation. Ephesians reminds us, don't give the devil a chance. In other words, don't give the devil an opportunity to work with you to lead you into sin. You see, if I have a problem drinking, don't go to the bar. And sit there until they ask you, do you want a beer? <laughs> no, that's a little bit too late. If you have a problem with lust and porn, don't go to those websites. And don't subscribe to those magazines. If we have a problem overeating, don't move next to a fast food restaurant. <laughs> I'm just saying. So it's funny because I was thinking last time, to myself, I was like, imagine if my cabinet and my pantry would talk to me every time I go and open it. <laughs> Otra vez. <laughs> You're here again. You already finished all the food, fatty. <laughs> Come on. What would I do? I'm going to avoid that. We need to avoid it. Don't give the enemy an opportunity. And look what the Bible says and reminds us. Plan carefully what you do. Avoid evil. You see, the key to overcoming temptation is to decide to avoid in advance. Predetermine. Don't put yourself in those situations. That might mean that you might have to lose some friends. Change jobs, or maybe even stop talking to some of those relatives. You just have to flee from temptation. Run away from it. Avoid it. Burn those bridges. Do the smart thing. Stay away. And I want you to hear this real quick. Look at the scripture. 
because God gave us grace. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to the ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. By His grace, which is an action of the Holy Spirit that makes us aware of what to do. You see, the same grace that saved us is the same grace that sustains us. Amen? Come on, church. I can't hear you. Amen. You see, God says, I will give you the power to overcome that temptation and that habit and that addiction and I will provide a way out. God is the only one that can turn your mess into a message, your test into a testimony, and your trial into triumph. Church, this morning, I've only talked about five simple steps of how to break from addictions. But there's so much more. And I want to encourage you to come to Celebrate Recovery this Friday night at 7 p.m. So that you can hear my second part. This was supposed to be break free. But the Holy Spirit always works. And it's always working on us. And we have to listen to what the Holy Spirit led us to. At this time, I'm going to ask you, in your notes, or when you were coming in, you were given a piece of paper. And in that paper, I want you to write down what you're struggling with. Now, if you don't have one, please raise your hand so we can have some of the others come by and give you some. Over here in the front. Then, I'm going to ask you to come on down, take a nail, and nail it to the cross. The Bible says, then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. As we nail our struggles and addictions to the cross, we are now denying ourselves. And we're saying, God, I choose you. I choose to follow you by nailing these passions and these desires on the cross. We are surrendering that same thing that has a stronghold on us. And we are now letting God take control. This is where it starts. Stepping out of the now to break the chains of addiction. So at this moment, I want you to stand up Come on, stand up. Don't be shy, stand up. Stand up. And as you're hearing this last song, and you hear the lyrics, ask God to help you see and allow the Holy Spirit to lead you to write it down, that piece of paper, so that we can come up here and nail it to the cross. If you 
Thank you so much, BCF Church, for being here with us this morning, for sharing this beautiful moment together. For your prayers, for your celebrations, for what we surrender here today, we encourage you, stay connected. Talk to the people who love you. Talk to the people who love Jesus. Because it doesn't end here. This is just the beginning. We are praying for you, we love you, and we hope to see you next week. Have a great day.